We've placed the event in a location and we've added a title. Now let's add a description. By the way, you can fill in any of these sections in any order and go back and forth between them. History in Motion doesn't review your inputs until you hit the Save button. So let's open the description pane and we can enter some text. So Grant's departure date was approximate. Clicking the bold, italic, or underline tag inserts the appropriate HTML tag. So let's say, let's make this italic. And you have to place your cursor after the I there. So let's say boats ran on, and we can make this, uh, we can add bold as well. Put the cursor behind the B. No regular schedule. Schedule. Now we have to close the bold, so we click B again and we get a slash B, put the cursor behind it, close the italic, slash I, there we are. Now let's add a uh, break, another break. Now let's add an image. So we click on, so here is uh, a picture of Grant as a young second lieutenant, so let's copy that link and click on image and provide the URL and save it. And as you can see here, History in Motion has inserted the appropriate HTML to access that image. So let's put another break and another break. And now let's add a link. Here is the Wikipedia entry for Grant's Boyhood Home. So again, let's copy that link click on the link button, there's the URL. If we don't put any text, then the URL will simply show up the way we have it here. On the other hand, we can just add some text and say, this is Grant's boyhood home. Okay, save it. And as you can see here, History in Motion has inserted the appropriate HTML tags. Now we won't see this until we finish creating the event and then click on it, but we'll, we'll see that later. So that's how you add descriptions. You can add as many images and links and as much text as you like. Uh, now uh, please continue with the video on adding start and end times.